So what's up, man? What's, what's going on? What are we uh, jumping into today? You know, I, I, so I'm in Second Corinthians right now, and I was going through First Corinthians, and and I remember the first time I went through First Corinthians, it was it it was uh confusing. Is the best word. Hold on, let me let me screenshot where I'm at in my Bible right now, because I do everything on the phone, even though I got a I got an actual Bible. Mm-hmm. But uh, wow. yeah, I remember the first time I was going through it. I was probably like in my first year of sobriety. And it, and I, I remember reading stuff like uh, better to be single than to be married. But if you you know if you can't uh, control your urges, you should get married. And I was really confused. Mm-hmm. I was telling my sponsor, I was like, "Dude, you're married. Should I even bother getting married? Like, this is what this is way before wow. I met my wife now and stuff." But you know, there, there's other stuff in there like that. That kind of makes sense. Like, uh, don't argue with fools. I think is in there. Um, mm-hmm. Stuff like, but I don't know. I was going through this book and I just. It gave me more confusion than it did clarity because I started in Hebrews, right? So Hebrews was good. Like a, a lot of the stuff about mm. being bold that I'm that I'm learning. So I think I did I did Acts, Hebrews, and Romans, and all that, that oh, all that good. tasted all that tasted good for the soul. Yeah, yeah. You, know? you went right for the uh, you went right for the, the 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 knife slayers of the New Testament right there, dude. I'd never read Acts before either. It's funny because like been a Christian my whole life, never never wavered in my faith. Right. Like I, I so I say I never wavered my faith in the sense that um, I've always believed I've always known like uh, it's the same thing with like with my dad, like with whenever my dad punished me growing up, like I never resented him. I was like, yeah, he's right. I totally deserve this. Right. Yeah. Kind of the same thing with my yeah. faith. So I've been a Christian my whole life. Never wavered from God in this in that in the sense that I've always believed, like there's been times when I've yeah. run away from the Lord. Right. In my own shame. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I'm mm-hmm. not good enough. I'll, I'll wait till I get my stuff together, and then I'll get back to God, which is, like, totally counterintuitive to, to the Gospels, right? Because it came from yeah, the sinners. Yeah. So in that sense, I've always been a Christian, but uh, uh, I have not been heavy in the Word. So, like, my first year of sobriety, especially the first four months, I, I read the whole Old Testament, which, like, changed my perspective a lot on Jesus' sacrifice. And then uh, now I'm going through the New Testament because I've only really read the Gospels. I, I've read verses and stuff. Um, but, yeah. That's I don't know what my point of that was, but that I, I had a point there, but I lost it. No, no, that's all good. Yeah, I mean, uh, just I mean, developing good study habits, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's just what we're we're here uh, to do and called to do. Aside from you know, all, obviously all the other commands and things like that, but you know, ultimately, you know, God is is looking at obedience over sacrifice. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so. How do we learn to, how, here we go, how do we learn to sacrifice diligently our time to our families? How do we diligently learn to sacrifice time for others, right? Loving others, uh, helping others, right? How do we uh, learn how to, you know, sacrifice, you know, money and, you know, whatever it is, right? Um, anything material for giving something away and donating and um you know all those things like our sacrifices to us but we don't learn how to do those things uh without first being obedient to his word you know what i mean right if we don't have a a working relationship with his word we're studying it we're meditating and this is why i was encouraging and still like, even myself like you know get into that word you know even if you don't feel like it you have off days bad days like even if it's like a scripture a chapter whatever you you know what i mean just show god the obedience because he'll use that and then that creates everything else that we do through the spirit you know what i mean right. but without you know knowing his word even even conversations right like it's God can use you to speak to somebody on their level. And it's not like we have to be these, you know, super high intelligent, you know, people knowing every scripture for scripture, you know, there's a time and a place for that. You know what I mean? When you're, when you're up against the opposition for sure. And you have people that are just, you know, wanting to know the theology, they want to get, you know, eschatological, you know, eschatology in there. And, you know, yeah, there, there are times for sure for that, but in basic tense though, um, it's just good to just know his word, you know, because again, it's not only good for us, but at the appropriate time, just knowing a little bit of scripture helps the listeners, right? You know, Absolutely. What I mean? and, and there's definitely tons of scriptures on that. 
but but definitely just a little bit goes a long way. Uh, and, uh, you know, but again, having that working relationship where you're just daily in there, daily reading, you don't know what the Holy Spirit is going to speak through you. You might be reading like, like you, you're over here turning through Hebrews, First Corinthians, but I, I guarantee that when you start having conversations, right, or, and you probably already had conversations, the those are the immediate scriptures that God is pulling out of you because it's fresh, you know what I mean? Right. It's well, right on time. So even outside of that, the conversations I had at work have shifted, like, in a good way. And so I'll, I'll preface with this, like AA is basically, this is, this is the way I say it. Cause, uh, cause, uh, the fumbling my words here. This is the way I say it at work. AA is the idiot's guide to Jesus. Right. And I've always known mm. that, but the more I read the word, I'm like, yeah, this, this is, this book is, is just ripped off. From, this is the Bible. And it's funny that you were saying like, um, Read it even when you don't want to, because that's a huge thing in AA is um, if you don't want to do something, you should probably do it. Like specifically uh, in terms of like calling your sponsor or like going to a meeting. Like they always say, Mm -hmm. if you don't want to go to a meeting, that means you probably need to go to a meeting. Mm -hmm. It's funny, Mm -hmm. all the parallels I see. And so I was having a conversation with this dude and I have to keep it vague for, for HIPAA and all that stuff. But I was having a conversation with this dude and I just like, normally I wouldn't hammer it so hard about going back to Jesus, yeah. but I was just like, I was just going into it and we were getting deep in it. And I was like, yeah, man, this, this, this book, like what I said, this is what the conversation boiled down to. It boiled down to, do you need to be Christian to be sober? And I said, no, but the people who I see that are joyful in sobriety are the Christians. Mm-hmm. So the, the people, yeah. the people that I see that have not, not necessarily the most long-term sobriety, but the most, change radical change and joyfulness in their lives are the christians yet like i've seen regular secular sober people and i'm like yeah but you're not as a i don't see the light in your eye like i do with the dudes who are christian and are sober Mm -hmm. practicing because that's what guys ask me like do you go to meetings anymore i'm like dude i haven't been to meeting in like four years but i go to church a lot Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. i feel i feel like i feel god obviously allowed for aa to happen and it's a good thing, and it was a good springboard. Like, it, it was the biggest issue that I needed to deal with, and AA was a good springboard to deal with that issue. But I always tell guys, I don't go to meetings anymore because there's a ceiling, but there's not a ceiling with God. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's where mm-hmm. your encouragement in getting back into the Bible has been, like, game-changing. Yeah, yeah. And definitely to piggy, piggyback off of, of what you're saying about the, the AA, like, every... Every man-made system, right, uh, is, is has two things uh, involved with it. And definitely, I, mean, I remember when we were, uh, when I was going to my AA classes, right, after my DUI, uh, I'm, I'm like in there sitting in there, and I'm just like, and, I'm, and it's probably, it, mainly it's probably because I am uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? Even in my sins, Holy Spirit's never left me, praise the Lord. Um, yeah. But in sitting in there, I can hear and discern the difference of what's going on. You know what I mean? Right, on the deeper yeah. level where people are just there and they're just soaking it in and they're just like, Oh yeah. But, um, what, I, what I realized is that what, what, uh, what Paul, what Peter and James all conclude in, and I believe this is in James, but, but works without faith, they're dead works. Yeah. And literally that's what they're teaching people is dead works. This is why when you said right now, like there, there's like no, no life in them. Like it's not, you know what I mean? Like there's right. no joy in doing what they're doing is because they're just doing dead works. Or it's not, it's literally, it's literally like how God perceived uh, Israel. Like, like you guys are following the law, but it's not producing anything from you. You know what I mean? There's no life in, in it. You know what I mean? It's exposing the 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 truth right like the law exposed sin for what it is and in the same way these aa books and you know god you, you name the the group like they have some sort of you know code but that's what it does is it is it, is it excuse me it exposes the need for what the help is supposed to be but yes. it doesn't give you the hope that you need afterward this is why they they keep you bound right in chains they're like uh they're like so once you're an alcoholic you're always an alcoholic right you're not set free from it you know what i mean you're always an alcoholic oh how long have you been an alcoholic oh five years how long have you been sober 
oh, five years, right? You know what I mean? It, right. it's, it's different. But but we know that in Christ, we're free and set free from the bondage of sin, where they're still attached to that yoke. You know right. what I mean? It's Why hard. I've been sober for 20 years, right? I'm sorry to catch up, but no, you're good. yeah, I've been sober for 20 years, but I'm still an alcoholic. You're not. Interesting. What's well, funny? What's up? Okay. See? That's cool, buddy. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, there's a lot of cliches that you'll hear in AA, and because dude, uh, it there it was Christians who started it. Whether whether people want it, like they they if you read the history of AA, like they they were all about prayer. They were all about like God, and then God got removed because of the world. Um, yeah. But one of the cliches that you hear all the time is faith without. Power. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one of the cliches you hear all the time is that faith without works is dead. Hi, baby. Man, this is. What'd you get? My little ponies. My little ponies. <laughs> uh, this is baby Twilight. Yeah. But I'm pretending she's a grown up. I like that. Okay, I'm on. I'm on and right grown now. up Can you well, Come on. Well, we're gonna I like that. Like, uh, I know. Okay. Summer, come on. Hi, Leah. <laughs> Andre says hi. Hi, Andre. Hi, Andre. What up? <laughs> Summer said hi too. Uh, hi, Summer. <laughs> Well, it's funny everything that you're saying, dude, because it's so true that uh, God has been stripped from AA. And and like I said, like when I when I tell people, I'm like, hey, you want the truth? And like, yeah, I'm like, AA is the idiot's guide to Jesus, right? Because it's just, if you take it back to the roots and if you take to it what, it what it really is supposed to be, like all the steps and all that is really supposed to be, it's just to get you to Jesus. That That's what the 12 steps are. A relationship with yeah, Jesus. Exactly. That's what they That's what they are. Like what, it's been stripped of that and, and all these agnostics and the ocean or the universe. And I'm like, so you believe in the power of the universe, but not anyway, that's a whole different topic, but it's funny. Like, yeah, yeah. All those little nuggets from Christianity and the Bible are still in like faith without works is dead. Take it one day at a time. Like blah, blah all that kind of stuff, you know, it's all yeah, in there still. Yeah. So it's, it's just, uh, yeah. but I had never, I, I, it's funny. Um, I had never not said I was an alcoholic and it's, I usually say because alcoholism, is vicious and it's all it's just like it's it's satan right well let's just call it what it is it, it's satan it's the devil it's the enemy and he's always on your back and if you're not vigilant uh, and you don't stay up on your 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 game then he's going to get you and so usually the reason i tell guys that i still identify as an alcoholic because the minute i stop i start to stop saying these things i think i'm good and i got this but really what i should be saying is uh continually leaning on the power of god i, th I think that's really what the core of what i'm saying yeah, is and, like and i didn't I'm even realize set, it until right now free. you know right right mm -hmm. but so so what i say is like I, I i stay vigilant i never not identify as an alcoholic but really what i'm saying is like i'm a christian and i'm i'm not going to run away from the power of god as the best way i can put yeah. it right now right and, and i just i'm realizing that right now as i'm saying it is that that's the undertone or the message of really what i'm saying so when i say i'm an alcoholic mm. i'm gonna keep identifying as one so that i can stay vigilant really what i'm saying is i'm a christian and i i'm gonna keep leaning on god and i i'm literally just having this revelation right now as we're talking yeah exactly it's once we begin born again it's 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 like this we're 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 now saved born again set free right but God allows us to still identify with the sinner because right, okay. we don't intentionally sin. You know what I mean? We don't right. intentionally sin, but we identify because we've been there before. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. Uh, so, so what I'm doing isn't wrong, right? It was it's just, not wrong. It's just like but, saying I'm a sinner, yeah. even though I've been set free. Exactly. But okay. you always want to at least make the implication to yourself though, that, you're not an alcoholic, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're not a struggling alcoholic. You're set free from alcoholism, you know what I mean? And you just know that God's grace is what keeps you from going back, you know well, what I mean? It's but funny. even so... No, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, but even so, when we fall and short come, we have a mediator, Jesus, right? Yeah. That we can repent, pray to get back up and keep going. You know what I mean? So we're, again, we're, we're, we're at liberty, but yes, like Paul says, we don't practice our, our, our liberty in foolishness. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. but you are delivered. You're born again. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't, there's no change on you until you deliberately and intentionally go back to it. Right. Well, and that's why they, some, some, some of the guys that have had time and then come through the detox because they relapse, come through and they trip on my lifestyle. I'm like, yeah, because I'm not like, 
AA is and is not a cult, right? It's a cult in the sense that if you're not re- grounded in Christianity, yeah, you're stuck in the cult. You got to go to meetings every day. You got to do all the, all the blah 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 that they say in there. But because mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm in, I'm in the the Christian camp. I don't need to follow the edict that has transformed the program over the last 80 years. I think it started in the 40s or 30s. You know, whatever. Sorry, people, if I'm wrong. It started a long time ago, and obviously it's been transformed, and the world has taken over it. When obviously uh, you can't take over what's God, so there's the there's the world version, and then there's the Christian version. And people trip out when I say I don't go to meetings, I don't have a sponsor, I don't have this. Well, why? Because I have Jesus. Like I, I don't need any of these extra. Yes. It's, it, it, dude, it's kind of like uh, when uh, I don't know if, when they add in all those like Catholics, dude. When they add in all this extra stuff that just isn't in the Bible, and you're like, why are you doing all that? That where that's not biblical. It's just the same thing with yeah. AA. It's like AA doesn't say go to meetings for like go to meetings forever, sponsor forever. Like, it, dude, it's it's get to Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the key right there. That's just that's yeah. See, and and, and even that that's a parallel because the the road still okay. You have to have a sponsor. All right, we won't call it that. In Christianity, we have brethren that we just go to and talk to. You and exactly. You know what I mean? Well, dude. So. Not to interrupt you, but, but you're not leaning on the sponsor because you're leaning on the Holy Spirit, right? Well, exactly. So, that, like, when when guys ask me if I sponsor guys, I'm like, I don't, I don't. Sponsoring guys is only for the newcomers. You get a newcomer through the steps, you get him to Jesus, and then you take it from there. But it's like we're doing it. We're doing the work right now. We're two or more are gathered. Like we're doing it right mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't need yeah. to sponsor you. We just we're, we both believe in Christ, and we're, we're doing it right now. Yeah, yeah, there doesn't need to be these titles okay. and made up things. Yeah, but see, even that though, that's a good ministry to have though, because if you were to to actually, so in the world's view, yeah, you're sponsoring somebody, but in your view and in, in your heart of hearts, you're you're discipling them. So really, that's, that's the good way to start discipling somebody is to yeah, I'll be your sponsor, but then hit them with that gospel, hit them with that prayer. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like then you just then you reel them in. You know what I mean? Uh, and then that's what it is, right? Like, see, I think there's a disconnect, and, and this has been a long time, so we can go back years on this, but the disconnect with a lot of foundational teaching in Scripture is disconnected by our ability to use it in real time in the real world, right? Mm. Active. Like we hear the word, we go to church, all right, okay, the priest pastor is telling us going to all the preach the gospel. All right, so now I'm in the world, how do I preach the gospel? Right where you're at. You know yeah. what I mean? In the workplace, at mm-hmm. school, right? And then you use your environment as the catalyst and as the means, the mode, right? To deliver the message. Now, again, obviously you can't just be in their street preaching at the office, but what you can do is be attentive to the needs of those that are in your your office space. And when you hear things come up, oh, I'm in pain this, then you go and pray for them. Oh, I'm struggling with this. Hey, can I pray with you? Right? This is how we infect the world. But like again, our the the church today and the last 20, 30, 40 years, I think they we've lost the ability to be creative and be imaginative because we think it's so cookie cutter, even though there's tons of information on just this like going to a class like oh how do i witness and how do i like don't get me wrong they're great for people who maybe personally don't have a natural ability to talk and to right but even in that though why aren't we like why don't we know to just Hey, Lord, can you give me the gift to speak? Hey, Lord, can you show me and teach me how to speak? Direct your prayers. Hey, Lord, can you reveal to me specific people with specific needs so I can go and meet those needs, whether they be through prayer, whether they be through finance, right? And then we go into the world, and now we just wait on the signs and wonders of the Lord. And then we do what we just prayed about, right? See, we don't even know to do that, Right. And that's something that you, you you may develop over time, but imagine if if disciples and new converts, uh, and if they're real converts, and we have to eat, that's a whole other sidebar as well. Oh, yeah, no, no I, we talk about the pretend Christians all the time. Conversion, yeah, but but let's look at the word the the book of Acts for a second. True conversion 
you're going to automatically want to tell people about Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so your delivery, there's there's no, again, there's no box or frame on the delivery of it. You in your heart of hearts know by the divine presence of the Holy Spirit, I need to go tell somebody about Jesus. I've been saved. I need to go tell somebody. But instead, mm-hmm. our generation is like, we need to tell you that you need to go tell people about Jesus. They don't know about the Great Commission, Mark 16, 15, go go into all the world. Like, it's an automatic given if your conversion is true. So, well, it's, it's funny because, like, given the context of my workplace, it's a little special. I get I get to do it quite often. And it's funny. Sometimes I feel like, oh, you know, like you were just saying, I need to go out. And I'm like, oh, I do it. I do it like all the time because every time mm-hmm. I come into work on a Sunday, everyone's like, oh, yeah, I just got like it's so mellow here when you're here. And I'm like and I tell them all the time I'm straight up with it. I'm like, yeah, that's God, man. That's not me. I said a prayer before I came in. Or something, something's popping off. I settle things down. I go in the bathroom and I pray, and I'm, and they're like, "Oh yeah, everything got calm after that." I'm like, yeah, I, I prayed, dude. I rebuked, the, I rebuked the enemy. You know, yeah. but it comes yeah, up all the time, dude. It, even though, like, I, I, I don't hide my faith. Like I said, I don't hide my faith, but it's a workplace, so I, I'm a little more tactful about like when to move. Right? I wait for God to exactly. tell me when to move. But everybody knows, even people who just met me, yeah. they always say, "Oh, you're a Christian, right?" I'm like, "Yeah, yes, I am." Yeah, because everyone's like, mm-hmm. oh, there's just something different about you. Like, there's seven staff members here. Oh, everyone's so cool, but like, there's something different about you. I'm like, that's God, dude. That's not me. Let's talk about it. Yeah. I don't. I don't say yeah. let's talk about it, but it, but you know, that's how it goes. Like we. That's how it. Like we. We could talk about anything. We talk about movies, music, yeah. politics, and then it always shifts into the same direction, dude. And so, you're absolutely exactly. right. There, there's always a way. Like, oh, I can't do it at my job, and it's like you. You can. You're just fearful. It's like the the biggest mm-hmm. thing that God's been putting on my heart lately has there been to pray with people and i always feel like you know you get that that burning sort of anxiety desire where it's like yeah i I need to do this thing right now lately it's been for certain people whether it's a a a co-worker or a a client i've I've had it on my heart to just pray for certain people and i've just been living in that fear it's like i don't think this is the place even though we're already talking about god he's already clearly open to it but i'm just too scared to do that even though i pray all the time yeah yeah no it's true I mean, and, and these are, again, these are, um, I mean, if we can write a, a list out for people, but, but simple prayers like that, like, Lord, you know, show me, you know, number one, show me what my purpose is, show me what my calling is. And then as you're showing me my purpose and calling, teach me, Holy Spirit, teach me to pray for people, right? Teach me to acknowledge when somebody needs to prayer right teach me to be discerning of of again listening listening i'd say like one of the biggest things that i've learned and and just over the years like in developing my walk but also developing that is is really listening to people's needs their wants what they complain about right and I'm telling you, even when I was living in the world, I was living reckless, the Holy Spirit would still be like, see, this person needs prayer. You know what I mean? They don't need you to just, they don't need you to affirm why they're angry, upset. They need you to like pray for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But obviously I wasn't in a position to be like, hey, brother, like, let's pray because I wasn't living right. But the inclination has always been there. And this, yeah. I think this is another reason why living in the world is so hard as a Christian, as a believer, because you know what you should be doing, right? Yeah. And so you have all these people that are always just somehow in your life for whatever reason, but you discerning know what their need is, but because you're now backslidden or you're just now walking, you now are like, yo, you got some blood on your hands. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. This is why like going into Ezekiel 2 and 3 are, are just like, Oh man, when I was doing that study a few weeks ago, it was just crushing me because I, I really was sitting there and I was like thinking like, man, all the people that I've come across working in retail, uh, just on the bus stops, riding buses. I mean, I've I've touched so many people in my life, bro. And I mean the conviction of like you don't warn people of impending danger, their blood is on your hands. And then he even goes as far as saying, if you don't even warn a brother of mm-hmm. impending danger, right, that his blood is on your hands. It's better for you to warn a right. It's better for you to warn a righteous person that they're falling in their way and that they get corrected, they take the rebuke, and they get back on track, right? 
than it is like if you're warning people who don't know, right? Or don't, or you're not warning people who don't know as well that, hey, you know, get the gospel, get Jesus, da 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 da. If they go back in their sin, that's on them, but you told them what was up and their blood is no longer on your hands. And I think that even that too for the world, they think we're out here just screaming Jesus and preaching at them and this and that, but they don't realize that we're called to do this because if we don't, your blood is on my hands. I work with you every single day, and you don't even know that I'm a Christian? Man, I'm, the judgment's about to fall more on me than you. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's yourself. scary. Yeah, absolutely. Yo, man, bro. Well, like, I, and it's so, like, I, was telling, I was telling this client, it's not the exact same thing, but it can segue nicely into this conversation. There was a dude who, who relapsed at his treatment center, and he got ratted out. And I was talking to him. And he was mad about it. He was like, they couldn't have just left me alone, blah, da, 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 da. And I was like, hey, man. I was like, hey, man, when I was in treatment, I told everybody, if you relapse, don't tell me because I'm going to tell on you. And he was like taken aback. And I'm like, look, dude, if you saw somebody drowning, would you – everybody knows this example. If you saw somebody drowning, would you just let them keep drowning? Of course not. Yeah, You'd go exactly. help them. And I'm like, dude, not only if you relapse could you potentially die, but you could also take other people out. Do you really want to be the guy yeah, who yeah. takes another guy out? And he was like, man, I never yeah. thought about it. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, because we all have this stupid prison mentality where it's like, that guy's a rat. And I'm like, how is that helpful? So I should yeah. just let you stew in your sin and just do nothing about it? No, man, they, 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 they cared so much about you that even though they knew you were going to be mad, they, they said something and, and got you over to here to yeah. where you could get out of that sin. And he was like, yeah, I yeah. never thought of it that way. I'm like, I know most everybody, everybody just thinks of like, why didn't you just let me be in sin? I'm like, that's sin, bro. We just want to be hidden in our shame. Yeah. We don't want the light yeah. on, our, on us, but if we don't have the light, then, you know, we're done. Light is coming to the world. Men love darkness rather than light. That's why right. they hated the light. Yo. But, but, that made me, but that made me think of like, so I've been more bold lately since I've been reading the word. And it just made me think, mm-hmm. I, I just got to keep this up, man. Because the same thing I just told that guy, like you could say to me right now, like, hey, man, why are you hiding your faith? Why aren't you talking about God? Like, you ain't, you ain't got to mm-hmm. go and convert everybody, but everybody should know. At least everybody should know what, what you're about and have the opportunity. That's just what it is, right? Like, I, I definitely know, and this, I, and I'm glad because in the, I would say in the last year, it's the first time in my, in my life where... I I, re- I don't want to say the word clichély, but uh, I religiously carry my Bible with me everywhere I go. Yeah. Uh, I take it to work. I walk in. Customers know, hey, that dude has a Bible. Whether they, whether I mean, anybody can carry a Bible. The devil can carry a Bible, right? But exactly. but whether they know or not, it's the fact that like he represents something to do with that Bible, right? You know what I mean? Um, when I when I speak, when I talk. You know, obviously we have our off days and things like that, but obviously I don't, I don't cuss. I don't, I don't do none of that. My my demeanor is definitely a, a lot calmer than most. Uh, my ability to, to deal with chaos, you know what I mean, has been has been really honed over the last, you know, I don't know how long. Just working retail in general, but but more so being again in the Word and being in the Spirit, being in His presence, like. My, my ability to handle multiple things, you know, at one time is like when other people see it. And I'm telling you, there was one day I was having, man, actually, just before I got transferred to my new store, as a matter of fact, perfect uh, story is, I mean, I was personally having the worst day, bro. I mean, anything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Anything that could have broken, broke. Any type of disaster that could have been a disaster happen right i'm getting emails phone calls left and right my boss is over here texting me this and that her boss is texting here this and that oh we can see you on the cameras this and that. i mean just nonsense right and i'm telling you i was just doing whatever and the best as i could i'm even praying in my heart my mind i'm like lord you see whatever i'm doing the best as i can right come on and, jesus and, and deliver I'm, me yeah right like i don't even want to work here anymore right? i hate and this then, job and then, <laughs> and then um and then somewhere in the middle of all of that chaos uh i have to ring somebody up for a return right and i'm telling you i was i didn't want to even do the return like i just obviously i'm a manager i think i have to do what i gotta do so at this point i'm like all right what is it right and i and i handled it i mean i was being courteous i was being polite everything and i'm telling you this girl um i think she was a lesbian 
But but again, I don't, it, not that that's important. But I think it's it's just befitting though because she goes she goes, are you a manager? And I was like, yeah, I'm one of them. And she was like, oh yeah, I thought so because every time I see you, you're always on top of it and you're always taking care of everybody. Mm. And I'm having the worst day possible. And she said that. And I mean, bro, it just took the wind out of me, man. I'm just That's like, right. praise God. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, yep. like, like, like this is God speaking to this, through this person to me, letting me know that like, I see what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like, yes. yeah, it may feel like the world around you is, is putting pressure and is crushing. What does the word say? You know what I mean? We, we are, you know, uh, crushed, but not broken. You know what I mean? That's right. We are hard pressed and squeezed. You know what I'm saying? Bro. And that's how it's been, right? But that's how our experience in the world is, right? Like we're 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 seeing more and more of it. But yeah, man, that that just that alone was just like okay, like God is good, bro. I mean, as long as again we're 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 showing up for Him, and then that's the way that He takes care of us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, hey Lord, you're first. Let me get into the Word. Let me get into that prayer. Let me pray. I mean, I, I re- again, I pray for my job. I pray before I even go in. I pray for people I don't even know yet. Lord, send whoever you need to send. Give me a word, right? I've been studying. Give me a word for somebody specifically, right? And I mean, bro, it's been it's been intense. Like it's not just you know praying for people. That's beautiful. That's where we should be leading every every time. Um, but then there's also times divinely where it's like uh, you just might be doing that return you might just be talking to somebody casually but because you've been studying you've been praying without even thinking the holy spirit's speaking right through you speaking life to somebody and you're literally mailing it in the coffin for them you know what i mean oh yeah they're looking at you like how do you know that how do you like 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 what you just said right now is just you know what i'm saying and that's where the divine presence really comes from because you're like man like like if i wasn't reading if i wasn't in prayer if i wasn't dedicating right we were talking in the beginning if i wasn't being obedient in just the basic things for my life how can i expect god to show up you know what i'm saying when i dude. go out these doors well and that dude that that's where like the encouragement have been so great because my my prayer life has been it's pretty pretty good like my walk has steadily but just been growing and growing and growing since 2016 and it's funny when i first started i, I didn't want to work in treatment i didn't want to work at a detox i didn't want to do any of these things at first but that's just where god led me and i remember when i first started working at the detox that i've been working at since 2017 i remember anytime a client would come in i'm like god man I, I, what do i say to this guy because everybody's struggling that comes through there right everybody needs a word of encouragement there and i'm like i'm mr positive now that's what they call me at work but when i first got there it, yeah right it, it was like dude, I, I don't like you know some dude just told me his life story that's way crazier than mine i'm like yeah i don't know what to say to you dude and but it's funny because the more I pray, and especially now that I've been reading more, it's like, I don't even think, dude, like God just talks through me. And then whenever, you know, and, and they always, yeah, it's always an opportunity to give praise back to God. It's amazing what hearing the word of God can do, right? Because it says faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. And so it's like, yeah. the more I read that word, the more inspired my words get and the more I can glorify God. Because it's funny, right? Because because every opportunity that I get, somebody's like, oh, this place is so calm. Or, oh, you're always on top. Because they say the same thing to me. Like, I feel taken care of when you're here. I feel like I don't have to worry about my med times and all that kind of stuff. Or, man, what you just said, I, it's just what I needed to hear. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, oh, cool. Because that's because of God. Mm-hmm. That's not because of me. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. We, it. Oh, that's on a side it, note. Just... On a side note. Since we don't have the pro version of Zoom, it's going to kick us out in three minutes and 35 seconds. Oh, how sad. Well, I mean, it's all good. I have to. I actually have to go to a, a birthday party in a minute. Um, but what we can do, though, is we can uh, figure out a dedicated time to have, like, regular, you know what I mean, session. This was um, a good start, then, man. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Just to break it up, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Nick Hebert, Andre Contage, shout out. That's right. Um, but, yeah, so we could definitely get a, uh, you know, a regular session and then, you know, do the rest, cut, paste, and all that. Uh, yeah. So if you recorded it, um, we'll figure out later how to, you know, chop it up and make it into something for sure, for sure. Uh, oh, and I, yeah, I, also, man. I also figured out how to get, a, to, get, to get a mic on your phone. Oh, dope. So that dope. Right. Yeah. That's facts. That's straight facts. But what, and I what? need to get some headphones, too. Yeah, there's a couple of little, couple of little 
Yeah, I was gonna say break break break, break break it break break it down for us. We got two and a half minutes left. Why don't why don't you break down a message for us? Wrap, let's wrap oh, this thing up man. in a bow. All right. Uh, the message is going to be this, uh, since we're talking about Corinthians. Uh, we're just going to go into Corinthians 1 real fast, um, just through a day and age. Um, man has uh, taken created things, and they have began to worship those created things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and everything that we're talking about, AA and helping people and all that, the thing is this. It, it Bottom line is God's obedience to his word first trumps everything that we do for God. So we can't take the things that we do for God and make those idols to us. Those are created things, right? Mm -hmm. So our works are nothing without the faith. And without the faith, we can't do the works. And so we can't idolize uh, what we do. We idolize pastors. We idolize teachers. There's a thousand one streams of all kinds of people that we can sit here and listen to do a blue in the face. But until we become obedient to his word and create that relationship with him one-on-one, we'll never be able to do what we're called to do. So that's the, the basic message of that. And also the discussion. Yep. My, my uh, message is stay in prayer, stay prayed up and get in your word. Man, stay prayed up and get your word. Yeah. I had an old roommate in sober living who used to say that. He's like, dude, stay prayed up. And I'm like, I like that. Yeah, I mean, for real. We got less than a minute left. All right. For sure, for sure. What are we going to call this thing? Is this the, is this trading post? Are we on trading post? Yeah, we're on the trading post right now. Trading post podcast. Yeah. Nick Hebert and Andre Kinte. Yeah, trading post and fellowship podcast. This is a little, you know, co-collab. It's a crossover. It's going to go on both of our, both of them. So I like that. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll uh I'll record an intro and outro later. But uh yeah, man. Good to talk to you, bro. Good to see you. You already know, bro. Love that beard. Oh. That's right. Come on. And we're gonna discuss the music too, man, because this uh this project coming up is about to be sick. That's right. Hey, I'll talk to you all soon, right, all right? All right, brother. Be easy out here. Right, hey, God bless. Stay in the faith. You too. Always. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bro. Bye. Later.